Hi guys, hope you're keeping well. So this week we're going to take a little look at how to handle your snake for beginners. Um, yeah, I've seen a couple of questionable videos on YouTube, Facebook and all that stuff. So I figured I'd just go through and hopefully if you guys are having any difficulties at home getting your snakes out or, you know, handling them, hopefully this will help you out or at least give you some food for thought. So let's go and get into it. Hi, my name is Richard, aka Reptile Rich. I want to invite you into the world of living with exotic animals as pets, taking you on a journey to inspire the conservation and preservation of these amazing creatures and their habitat around the world. So first things first, when you're looking at your snake before getting it out, you want to judge the snake, you want to read the snake. Now, a snake basically has three modes. Feed mode, thinking mode, and defensive mode. Um, so, you're going to get to handle your snake, you want it in thinking mode. You want it to be looking around, taking everything in. Um, they're ambush predators, so they cannot take the risk of losing prey. So, movement, heat, or any of the form in front of them is usually taken as food or a threat and um, they don't have many friends in the wild even though these snakes are far from the wild they're captive bred and um, they still have a lot of these basic instincts so this guy is very food driven as you can see i'm only near the viv i'm only near the front and he is already coming up to me can you see him now if you notice his movements it's very quick it's very twitchy those tongue flicks are very quick and then in and then nothing. Very quick, then in, then nothing. Any movement over the top, look at that, he's watching, he's tracking my hand. You see that? Watching. If I if that if that top wasn't there, he'd be going for me right now. You see that coming up to that hand there? Food? No. Now what you'll see is I'll take this openness. Now, with a snake like this, with a strong feeding response, I would recommend tap training. Um which if you've seen this video going on Facebook recently of the reticulated python attacking the lady who comes out the top and it's in the glass of vino, she puts her hand underneath it and gets tagged and wraps around. Anyway, a great method that would have saved her there would have been tap training. Now what you're going to see here is, like the lady, this little, this is a youngster, this is only a year old, this is a captive bred 19 uh, hypo Burmese python, a snake that is known to have a very good feeding response. Now, usually I would have my snakes in from the side. Predators come from the top and friends come from the side or prey. But with my babies, I keep them in this tub and I've got no option but to go in from the top. But you see that? You see that quick movement? You see him going for my hand there? That is feeding mode. He is not my friend. He is not looking for a kissy. He is looking to eat whatever hot thing is moving in front of him right now. So... See that? Can you see him? So, everything in front of him is food. You see that? Poised still. Quick tongue flips. Anything moves around him now, the top is off. He will have it. All I'm literally going to do is take this hook from the touch. See the neck relaxing? Look at that. See that recoil? Tongue's changing. He's like, oh no, that's not food. So all I'm going to do is again, I'm not going to go in front of the head. I do not, I never like to go in front of the face. And I'm just going to scoop him out. Now look at that, see how he's trying to get away now? That's thinking mode. Retreat, not food. And now that snake that would have tagged me about five seconds ago, like that lady's with tick. Now I can get the kisses. So there is a good technique if you have a snake with a strong feeding response to separate that feeding mode. And now he's in thinking. Notice the tongue flicks. Big, long tongue flicks. Movements are slow and easy going. The head's a lot more easy going. The tongue is right out. He's taking everything in right now. He is in 100% thinking mode. So it's all about reading your snake, knowing your snake. Some breeds are worse than others. Um, there's only two of my animals that have a good feeding response, and that is Mordecai over there, the Serenium Redtail, and Hunter here, the Burmese Python. Um, 
You don't have to tap train in every snake. Um, it's just handy for snakes with a strong feeding response to separate that mode. Um, it will give the snake peace of mind and it will give you peace of mind. So there is Hunter. Very easy going. No, he doesn't make your food. This guy is also feed mode, but I think because he doesn't strike in the viv. Now this guy strikes in the viv. Not going to do it today, but he will often strike when walking past, which for a new keeper, I'm dusty top, I'm not dusted in here for a while. So for a new keeper would take that as being defensive, being viv defensive. So I take the back clip off first, then the front clip. So that when I'm taking the lids off these things, because they're at head height, I'm pulling it this way. So even if the snake wants to pop at me, there's a door between my face and his. That way I can step back and evaluate the snake. Now, again, very still, very twitchy if he does move. Tongue slip flicks are short and quick. He's looking for food. Now both these snakes have actually already been out about half an hour ago on the live stream. So that's how quickly they'll settle down and go back into feeding mode. So if your snake is feeling defensive, it is because it's feeling threatened, which is not so easy to get rid of. That's a trust issue. That is a case of calming the snake down and teaching it that you are not a threat, which is only going to happen through time. A um, couple of reasons. Um, for defense mode. Um, if you're a breeder, it'll be eggs. Mama gonna defend her eggs or her babies. A snake in with a new litter, believe it or not, will defend its litter, will defend its eggs. Um, it could be, as I mentioned before, viv defensive, um, which is often down to some sort of husbandry issue, whether the viv's too big and not got enough hides in it. Um, you can put a snake in a big viv, it's smaller, but you're gonna want a lot of hides in there. I'm going to put a two foot royal python or a ball python in a six, in a six foot vivarium. You're going to need so much hide stuff in there. You're not even going to be able to see the snake ever, let alone feed it, because you're never going to be able to find it. So find that happy medium. I mean, these are two, two and a half foot snakes, only in 33 litre rubs. And as you can see, they're happy, healthy, they're feeding, they're fantastic. Um, they haven't got any creases up their sides because they're constantly curled up because they're too small. So um, I always like to step the vivariums up as the snake grows, the enclosures get bigger with them. So there is your main causes. Vivs being too big or, like I say, eggs. But if you're a breeder, you're going to have a pretty good hold on that type of stuff already. So let's move on to the next subject. Or the next subject. Let's move on to handling. Now here's another one actually, an interesting one. Handling snakes. I didn't even write this one down. As you guys know, I plan my episodes. That's why I take a, a week to do them. Um, some snakes, especially boas, do not like to go home. Um, they hate it. They love being out, they love being handled, they love their cuddles. Um, so it is often a nightmare to put your snake home. Never, Never be tempted if the snake's like just going in the viv to grab the tail and give it a fright to send it in the viv quickly because you're ruining your trust with that snake. You're giving that snake a fright. You want the snake to be 100% calm with you, to have its back to you and to leave its tail with you because the most sensitive ends are their tail and their head. And that's the ones you're going to have trust issues with. So if your snake is just easing into its viv with its back to you and all of a sudden feels something grab its tail and gets a fright, um, you're going to ruin that trust in a way. So... Um, Try not to shoo them in their vivs as quickly as possible. Like I say, boas don't like to go in their vivs. Um, that is there. Quickly put it in. Let them hook themselves around something is what I like to do. I like to let them hook themselves around his height. Um, he's actually easy going tonight. That's the most easy going he has ever been. But like I say, he's already been out for a cuddle because I've not long done the live stream on the Facebook page. So yeah, getting them out and getting them in. Read them and don't scare them when you're putting them in. So let's move on to the next subject. Getting, we'll start from the beginning, getting your snake home. You have your first snake, second or third snake, whatever. You've just got it home. 
You are super excited. Um, however, the snake has just been on a very long journey. It's possibly had limited water. It's been scared. It's been with new smells, new sounds. Um, maybe even new sights if they're boxed in a clear box. <coughs> so, when you get your snake home, you're going to want to let it hydrate. Some people soak them in a tub and then put them in their viv. You want to give them, what I like to do is give them a quick look over. Check the snake's okay, check it's healthy. Get it in its tub and let it calm down for a day or so. Um, I never really leave it for more than a day or two. Uh, Lilith here was even left seven hours and I had her out again. She was um, really good. But some people leave them for like a week. Could you imagine being trapped in your kitchen for 24 hours, not being able to go anywhere or do anything? You'd be fairly familiar with your surroundings pretty quickly, you know what I mean? So 24 hours with most snakes or most animals is long enough in my opinion. Maybe some of your more advanced things, maybe so, um, maybe a bit longer. If your snake's particularly unhappy, maybe even an extra day. So, you're ready to start taking your snake out. It's settled down. It's settled down after a day, or maybe even a couple of years into ownership. You're ready and gearing up to take your snake out. Now, we've established separating those modes with heavy feeders and um, defensive snakes. So, let's take a look at a snake that doesn't really give two monkeys. Um, isn't a very strong feeder. In fact, this girl's yet to eat for me and is not at all defensive. So, pretty much your typical snake. So, fibs open, hides off. Hello, sweetheart. Straight in. Confident. Like I say, hands not in front of the face, hands under the body. Scoop it under. You want to support that body. You don't want her dangling. You don't want her supporting her own body. Uh, you want to keep her whole body nice and secure. Nice and safe. You see that I have her whole body. I'm not holding her by one bit or by the tail, letting her dangle. She feels safe and secure with me. That is gaining trust. And um, she knows to trust me. She knows, right, I'm comfortable. I'm not going to fall. And that is a good thing. So it's about confidence. Straight in, grab the animal, straight out again. Now, with your bigger snakes, um, as you can imagine, their prey item is about the size of your hand or arm. Many species see or have the bo added bonus of heat sensory pits, so they can detect heat a lot more. So your hand and heat signature of your hand or arm is the same thickness, the same size as their prey item. So you put it in there and you're putting it in and you're getting on nerve and you're going, oh, I don't know, oh, I'm not sure, oh, can I take her, oh, I'm not sure, or maybe... Oh no, she's gone that way. I can't get her. Now your hand is bouncing about in there behaving like a prey item. Its heat is the same as a prey item. And that snake is watching it, getting more and more excited as your hand's bouncing about inside that vivarium. Textbook way to get bitten, or at least stir the animal up a little bit anyway. So you want to be confident. Read that animal, gauge that mode, separate that mode, straight in, straight out. Support the animal. No mucking about, no messing about. So if I'm going back in, I'll get the hide ready. So, you have your snake out. You are supporting the body. Now, as you can see, as you've watched with all my animals, I don't grab. I'm not holding them. They're basically holding me. I'm always open palmed. The snake has a hold of me. Now that is called a comfort grip. She's squeezing me. She's holding on to make sure that she does not fall. Um, if a snake wants to hold on to you like this on your hand or arm, let them. It will add to their trust. It will add to their handling. Now remember, not all species are arboreal, so you're holding them off the ground and up in the air. It may make them feel uneasy. Like little Lilith here is a ground-dwelling boro. Um, and as you can see, she's holding on tightly. So I am making sure that I have her and as much of her body as possible so that she feels as comfortable as possible. 
So my palms are open, I'm letting her hold me, I'm letting her flow through me. Now my movements aren't quick, they're not twitchy. You see a lot of YouTubers and reptile people, you know, they've got the babies and they're doing this with their hands and they're getting, they're flailing at them. Now in some cases when you have an aggressive snake that will just generally take lunges at you, some tree uh, arms and tree bows and things like that, back for it. That is a technique used to d distract them to bite the hand rather than the face. Um, but when you have your own pet uh, that you are teaching to trust you and who you are learning to trust, you want your movements to be slow, easy, calm, just chill. You see, all my snakes I can trust for those kisses. And then um, that is because um, everything is kept slow, calm, chill. The animals are as relaxed as I am, which is good, even in babies. Um, she's just a youngster. Um, she's easy going as the rest of them. Now, you've got your snake out. How long should you handle it for? That all depends on a couple of different things. The age, the species, um, conditions in the room as well. You don't have, want to have your snake too cold for too long. Um, some species, the dominoes and the royals themselves have been known. Uh, some people will tell you that they should be only held for short amounts of time. Um, yet individuals are also different. Um, the longer you have them, the longer you can have them out. If you have a snake that's particularly uneasy, a bit defensive, a bit unsure, you want those handling sessions short and sweet. Um, you want 5-10 minutes of good positive handling and then put them back. You don't want to hold them out for as long as possible and get them uneasy and all that kind of thing. You want them just short and sweet and then increase the, handle, uh, the sizes increase the amount of time that's out gradually um, over time. So like I say, people will say that dominoes and royals don't like being handled for long. I mean, she, when she was at Paul's house, Paul had her around his shoulders for like three hours, <laughs> you know what I mean? And she's just an absolute puppy dog, loved it and took it. But there are, indiv there are always individuals that are different. Um, so it's all about learning the snake seeing what the snake likes. If the snake seems like it's getting anxious, trying to get away from you, it's no longer holding on to you, it's trying to move quickly and find other things, get anxious, just put them back and uh, let them calm down and come back to it the next day. If they can get home on a positive note, they will sit there and it'll go through their mind. That wasn't so bad. You know, that wasn't, that wasn't too bad. And you're closing doors and putting lids on. Make sure there's no tails in the way of doors. I have had a boa with a broken tail, just the tip because the owner had slammed the glass shut too quickly. So when shouldn't you handle your snake? When is not the time to do it, to leave them alone? <clears throat> I'm a firm believer if your snake is, don't let the animal own you. If it's defensive, it needs work with, you're still gonna have to take it out even while it's snapping at you. To work on it if it's not had the best start in life, if it's been neglected by a previous owner, um, you're still going to have to persist and take that animal out, but like I say, short and sweet. So the only times I would say it's not okay to leave your snake alone, it's not okay to handle, and to leave your snake alone is when, <clears throat> uh, basically two main times, when they have food in them. So when they've just had a meal and they're still digesting, leave them alone because they risk, you know, regurgitation, har harm to the internal organs of the snake um, and just general stress of the animal because they are at their most vulnerable. They're at their most vulnerable when they have that big meal in them slowing them down. They can't really defend themselves and get away if they need to. And when they are in shed. Now, some animals are okay to take out when they're in shed. Some can get a little bit grumpy because they can't see at a certain stage of the shedding process. They're also blind, so it can also be a little stressful for them too. So it's more a case of just giving their snake their space to do their thing when they're shedding. Um, now, some people put their snake, especially new keepers, it's, all, it's very often, nine, nine times out of ten, it's new keepers. 
put their snake in a separate tub and feed them in that, then put them back in the box to try and separate feeding in normal modes. In all honesty, that's fine, um, but there's no really any point in it. The only thing you're doing there is putting yourself at risk of getting a feeding bite because the snake's still in feeding mode because it's just had a mouse, it still smells mouse. As I was mentioning before, um, the heat signatures and stuff, plus the scent of the mouse is there, so there's an extra factor. Um, and the fact you're moving the snake after it's eaten, so it's vulnerable. Um, you risk regurgitation and stress. <coughs> Pl um, and then you also have to take into consideration bigger snakes. When this little guy here potentially could get to about 15 foot, could you imagine putting, finding a separate enclosure big enough to f put this guy in when he is needing fed? And with how strong his feeding response is, could you imagine the stress of moving him to and from that box um, with a rat in the room? It's a recipe to get tagged. That's when you do end up like that woman with the reticulated python who got bitten. So some people have used it with um, some success, but they've never moved on from little small snakes. In all honesty, there is no need to feed your snake in a separate box, providing you read it right, you know what you're doing, um, I've never done it. I did it at the very beginning of my reptile career because uh, it was a royal python. I was told to do that and I didn't know any better. And then when I moved on to the bigger stuff, I quickly quickly realised I'm not going to be able to keep doing this. So I stopped doing it. So guys, that wraps up how to handle your snake for beginners. I hope that you guys found some sort of information in there i hope that was helpful to you and um, if it was please feel free to comment on the video and say that you have found something interesting or learned something from this video because i would love to know that i have helped someone out if you have any more tips let me know and um, you can comment in the video you can message the reptile rich facebook page as always all the links are going to be below in the description now i have started doing reptile parties all the links will be in the description below i hope you guys enjoyed that don't forget to subscribe if this is your first time visiting the channel and i will see you guys next week